so i go to see if the listing has any reviews and it doesn't and that is really the second red flag but that's the first first red flag for me he messages me and he says hey simone so unfortunately the unit that you were supposed to be staying in has a um, really bad leak and it makes the apartment uninhabitable basically and he asked me if i would be okay with moving to another unit of his and you are just now telling me this leak just suddenly pops up the day before i'm supposed to be there okay but how is it possible that i have now switched units and i'm in a new unit but all the directions that you gave me fit there is no water leak in this apartment and the pictures that you gave me for the new listing are the exact same that the new listing is but i changed apartments though right i get back to the airbnb around 6 30 so i put the key in the deadbolt and i'm turning turning it turning it door won't open just won't open So I put the key in the deadbolt and I'm turning, turning it, turning it, door won't open. Just won't open. So I try, I try, I try, I try, and I have to pee so bad and I get so frustrated. I pulled up the Airbnb app and I called the host because they had provided me with, um, he had provided me with his number. Uh, for another reason before. So I called the phone number and he didn't answer. Then I messaged him in the app and I said, hey, um, the door won't open. And I'm trying everything that I can, but the door won't open. So he says, call me. I didn't look at the time to see if there was the same numbers or if he had me call a different number than what he, than what was listed. But he said, call me, he provided me with a number and um, I called him and he was like, what do you mean, what's going on? Just trying to get a deeper understanding of the situation. I explained to him that I was trying everything that I could, but the physical like um, handle seems like it wasn't turning. Like the deadbolt was turning, but the handle was not. And um, I, he was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. This has never happened before, I can't believe this. So he said, can you FaceTime me? Now, I agreed to let him FaceTime me because he wanted to see the door. So I FaceTimed him and I said hi briefly and then I immediately flipped the camera so that um, he could see what was going on. So he was telling me, like giving me verbal directions, like turn it left, turn it right, try to twist it, try to open the latch. And then he goes, did you try putting the key in the bottom lock? And that was confusing because I was like, there, there is no bottom lock and you would know that because this is your property like you should know that so i thought that was really odd so he goes okay 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 i'm gonna call emergency maintenance now we hang up the phone and i kind of laughed to myself because i'm like Ugh, i think i fucked up i think that i am the reason that this door isn't opening i thought that earlier on i had removed this too fast and somehow um damaged the lock or damaged the handle in some way that is what i thought to myself that was the only logical thing in my head so i kind of felt bad because i was being really rude to him for something that I, at the time i thought was my fault so i get in my car and i'm sitting there um doing whatever i was doing to pass the time and then he facetimes me and i was annoyed that he was facetiming me because what the f are we facetiming for but I answered the FaceTime and um, he was like, hey, so I called maintenance. I put in maintenance requests. They should be to you very soon. Um, and I'm like, okay, thank you. And he was like, so how are you liking Atlanta? I'm, it, it's cool. Oh, so you're moving here. You're here to apartment shop. Now this isn't weird because I did tell him that I was coming here for the purpose of searching for apartments. I was like, it was fine. 
And he was like, oh, okay, so since you're moving from Cleveland, that must mean that you don't like it there. Nope. Like I was being so short, such a big, and I'm such a nice person. I was surprised how rude I was being to him on the phone, but I just was like, why are we talking about me? Only thing that we need to be talking about is me getting into this apartment and then you not talking to me for the rest of the night or for the rest of my stay, unless I need something concerning the apartment and then we can talk about that. So he kind of gets the hint that I'm being super short. Well, no, he actually didn't. I was the one that ended the conversation. I said, okay, so um, let me know what maintenance says and let me know when they're on their way and if I have to be there when they open the door. Okay, bye. A, a lot of time had gone by and I messaged him and I said, hey, any update? Maybe like an hour had gone by and I said, hey, any update? He goes, I put in a bunch of maintenance requests. I'm so sorry. Um, they should be there shortly. He calls me and he goes, hey, so I put in a bunch of maintenance requests. Um, they should be there shortly. He said, have you eaten tonight? I said, no, I have not. He said, okay, so give me your cash app and then I can send you some money so you can get something to eat tonight because I feel bad that I'm inconveniencing you and you know one part of me wants to say like oh that's really sweet he really does feel bad and he wants to make that up to me but what I'm never gonna do is take money from a man especially a man that has something over me um I guess you could say a man that has more cards to play than I do so I kindly um, turned him down and told him, thank you for the offer. That's what is really sweet, but it's actually very unnecessary. I'm okay. Um, I, I don't really need your money. So even now I am still like, was he being nice or was that a way to for him to get a little closer to me and gain more personal information about me, such as my cash app name, which I don't really know what you can do with that, but like, I'm not giving that out. Like that's weird. So I go and get something to eat. And you did see that in the vlog um, where I showed that. And I come back. I am waiting so long that I fall asleep. And remember I said I, I, I got back to the Airbnb at 6.30 when all this started. It was 9 o'clock when I messaged him and said, emergency maintenance still isn't here. I don't really know what to do. He said, you know what? I'm just gonna come there and get you into the apartment myself. I said, okay. So I go to sleep and I wake up to my mom calling me and I have to, of course, fill her in. And I wasn't looking forward to it because I wasn't looking forward to her worrying, you know? Um, but I fill her in briefly. And then at the same time I'm on the phone with her, he calls and says, or he texts me and says that he is present at the apartment. I meet the Airbnb host at the door of the apartment and he looks like a really regular guy. Um, he starts to work on getting me into the apartment and I don't know if I'm just like dense and I don't understand things about like homes and like locks and doors and stuff but like um, it just kind of felt like he just knew what the problem was. And maybe I'm just an idiot and anybody could spot what the problem was, but he just started like going in to like try to fix it, to get me in. But then he asked me, so you were looking for apartments? What city were you looking for apartments in? And you know what? That's probably a normal thing for a normal person to ask, but in this situation, it didn't feel normal. So I just said, um, you know, here, there, I named literally every single solitary city <laughs> in Atlanta. La, 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 la. La 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 yeah. The actual places that I was looking into, the actual cities that I named were not places that like cities that I was actually looking to move to. It just kind of creeped me out that he asked. So I answered and I lied. And um the man is he's working, working, working to get this door open. And it occurs to me, I said, How how are you gonna get the door open? He then proceeds to break the handle off of the door. So the door no longer has a handle. And then once he breaks the handle off the door, he tries to get it to perfectly fit with the latch to make the, the latch move in order for the door to pop open. So I'm just sitting there thinking like, how, how are you gonna get the handle back on? It's impossible according to my simple brain. It seems pretty impossible. 
when he's trying to get this thing to latch and he can't do it the neighbor from across the hallway comes out and he looks at the airbnb host and he looks at me and he was like are you all okay and the airbnb host looks over his shoulder very briefly and then turns back around and goes yeah yeah, yeah man we're we're all good we're good and my sister didn't point this out until later but she was like if that man lives there then they should recognize each other because they will be neighbors and it's not like the the neighbor was like this is the airbnb door and the neighbor lives all the way down the hall when he was just walking to get to like the elevator to get no 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 this is the door of the airbnb this is the neighbor's door just across the hallway right there's like a few feet in between their doors so you should know who your neighbor is so i didn't put that together in the moment but i think that that's why the neighbor was looking like who are you people the airbnb host that explained that um the lock was broken and he was trying to get in so the guy was like okay well i have a toolbox inside of here he was like i'm i'm about to go work out he was like you guys can just use it to get in and then like i'll be back to pick it up um i said okay thank you so much so he goes and gets the toolbox the airbnb host takes a pair of pliers sticks it into the door twists it and the door pops open immediately so the door pops open and we both go inside and he doesn't let the door close and neither do i i'd be damned if i let that door close behind us i walk inside the door and so does he and i think that he stops the door from closing first and then he tries he gets the tools together and he starts working and unscrewing every single mechanism out of the bottom latch so he starts unscrewing it and um i'm putting together in my head like so you're taking every single part of this lock apart and he takes it all apart and he goes okay so um if maintenance doesn't come and fix this tomorrow i'll come back down and i'll do it myself barely looks at me once he takes the locks the whole lock off he goes okay i'm gonna go back to work okay bye rushes out of the apartment the door closes behind him i lock the deadbolt which is still on there but there is a literal hole in the door a hole in the door as in someone can stick their hand through like a small hand but it's very possible to stick your hand through that hole reach up and unlock that deadbolt from the outside so i stood there i processed it and in that moment i swear to god i heard god say you are not staying here tonight and that is when i said out loud i am not staying here tonight so I start walking around, I'm pacing. That's when I pulled out my um, camera and I briefly did that video. And even now looking back on it, that was so stupid. I should have just exited immediately because the, the feeling, the vibe that I got, I was so scared, so scared. I didn't understand why this man thought that I would stay in this Airbnb with a hole in the door, okay? So I call my mom, fill her in. She, I'm telling her I'm leaving. She thinks it's a good idea. She sits on the phone with me. I take maybe three minutes to book a hotel to get out of there. And I booked it for one night. And um, I packed, I told her I would call her back. I need to pack up my stuff. She wanted to stay on the phone with me, but I couldn't stay on the phone with her, not because I didn't want to talk, but because I was about to fucking lose it, to be blatantly honest. So I call one of my friends and I lose it. I'm bawling, crying, packing up my stuff, just talking about how I should have listened to my intuition. Something is wrong here. This is not good. And all the entire time, everything I kept on hearing was, this feels like sex trafficking. This feels unsafe. This feels as though I'm being set up. I felt it in my bones that something was wrong. So I packed up all of my sh I barely did a once over of the apartment. I don't think I'm missing anything, but for all I know, I could have been missing a whole damn bag because I was so in a hurry to get the hell out of that apartment. I got to my hotel and I finally felt like I could breathe. I, the rest of the trip went fine. I was okay, but 
the more and more I thought about it once I got out of the situation, the more sketched out I became. And maybe you just sat here and watched this, what's probably gonna end up being like damn near a 30 minute video about the situation and you think that I am whole tripping, like that this was all in my head and that all of the things can be explained away because they, they can, they can be explained away but there's too many things to explain away if that makes sense like there are, are too many things to make excuses for and there are too many coincidences and what it kind of boils down to is this there's two options the first option is that i am tripping like i was just paranoid because i just was and um, this man is perfectly nice. He's a regular guy. And I did break that lock by putting my um, little tool in it. I basically was my own undoing. And I was the reason that I was locked out of that apartment. And he really was trying everything that he could to get me back into this apartment. And he was just a nice guy. And it was just a really weird situation. Now that's scenario number one. Scenario number two is that my gut instincts were spot on. That from the moment that I booked that Airbnb, God, my gut, whatever you want to call it, was screaming at me not to do it. And that this really was a setup for sex trafficking. Worst case scenario, someone came to that apartment the first night that I was there and tried to get in and they couldn't because of all of the things that I had on that door. And they knew that I had something inside the door to where a simple key wouldn't get them in. So what did they do? They watched me and waited until I left the Airbnb for the day, broke the handle, which forced the Airbnb host to come out, see what I looked like, get an assessment of you know how tall I was, how much I weighed, just an overall assessment of me. And now that he has that and he has taken the entire handle out of the door, none of my tools are effective now. You literally can reach your hand inside of that apartment and get in and gain access to me. And he knew that I was traveling alone because he confirmed it by, because he came out to the apartment in order to let me in. And if I had stayed in that apartment, maybe nothing would have gone wrong maybe it really was just all in my head or maybe whatever plan that he himself or whoever he was working with would have been executed and i might not be sitting here making this video which makes me really really sad and really emotional um i was really upset when all of, when everything happened i don't want to cry and i'm not going to cry because i am okay um <clears throat> But it was such a learning experience for me because I have been saying like, I've had a mother to watch over me my entire life. And I've had sisters and people with wisdom and guidance able to guide me through things. And I need to learn how to find my own voice and listen to my own self. And I have to ask everybody about what I should do. And I've been saying that I need to do that. This was that for me, this was so such a big lesson in the fact that if I feel something, go with it. Because I'm moving to a city where, I mean, everybody does not have your best interests at heart and everybody is trying to make it and do something. Whether that be in entertainment, in business, or in sex trafficking, it's all a business. And no one is gonna have my back like I'ma have my back. And no one is gonna have my best intentions like I'ma have my best intentions. And I am, Thank God that this experience did not end up with me getting hurt in any way. And it is such a learning lesson. And at the end of the day, I just wanted to share this story because if I can help any, any, any person out there, I just want you all to trust your freaking gut. Trust your gut. I read somewhere that your conscience is actually God speaking to you. And maybe that is the case. And if you don't believe in God, then that is completely fine. 
but believe that little voice that's inside of you because at a minimum it's just like your best self warning you and it does take some trust and some discernment to be able to figure out when that voice is you know tripping and when it's spot on but i genuinely feel that when something is really wrong you will feel it in the pit of who you are and if you won't be able to argue against it you know so that very long story is the story of what happened to me in Atlanta. I was not physically hurt, no. Um, I am okay. I am able to sit here and tell this story, which is a blessing because so many hundreds of thousands of women are not able to do that. You know, I don't know if I escaped anything. I don't know if this was sex trafficking. I don't know if this was just a little creepy. I don't know what this was, but I know it wasn't normal and I know that it wasn't okay. So I, again, want to reiterate that if you feel something, believe it. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching this video. Please remember to stay blessed, trust your intuition, and know that whatever you think, whatever inkling that you have, whatever you feel, is probably right. Remember to keep positivity in your life because positivity breeds positivity and we have no time for negativity in 2019. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.